Hello, this video will be a short introduction to CF Mesh. CF Mesh is a meshing tool that comes with OpenFoam. It has quite a few meshing options including Cartesian 2D and 3D meshes, P Mesh, and Tetrahedral Mesh. One great aspect of CF Mesh is that it automatically uses multi-threading, which makes pre-processing much faster. Another thing I've noticed is that it deals with inflation layers much better than Snappy Hex Mesh. Unfortunately, CF Mesh doesn't come with a nice user interface, but if you're generally comfortable with OpenFoam file management, you shouldn't have any issues. Before we begin, navigate to the appropriate file directory in your bash. I've stored my files within the CF Mesh tutorial examples inside of the modules directory within OpenFoam. Here you can see that I have a pretty basic directory. You can see that my STL file is a basic cube with no exterior domain. The most noteworthy file is in the systems folder and is named MeshDict. This file defines the basic parameters to control CF Mesh. I will cover each of these once I have created the mesh. You can see that I am also renaming the boundaries and specifying their type at the bottom. The first command basically takes the original STL and creates a bounding box. The size is defined by the numbers. As you can see, the numbers dictate how far the bounding box should extend out from the origin in all directions. A mistake I made at first was thinking that these numbers were coordinates, and I was defining negative values. You should actually think of them as magnitudes of a vector pointing in that direction. You can see that we now have an additional bounding box STL file. Now we are going to combine the original STL and bounding box STL into one STL file using the following command. And you can see that the new STL file also appears in our directory. Just in case what the previous steps were doing is somewhat unclear, I'm going to show you what the combined STL looks like. Here you can see the original STL inside of the bounding box we defined earlier. Great, now that the geometry is all set up, we will just generate the mesh using the Cartesian mesh command. Notice that the clock time is much lower than the execution time. This is because CF Mesh uses multi-threading. Now I create the foam file to be able to inspect the mesh in Paraview. And you can see that it is in the directory. Now we load the foam file in Paraview. The first part of the mesh dictionary file defines your basic mesh size. You can see that I have a uniform mesh of 5 centimeters. Note that I am ignoring the refinement zones right now. The next thing that is defined are local refinements. I only specified the local refinements at the object. You can see that the mesh on the surface of my object is 3.125 millimeters. Next, I added a refinement box around my obstacle. This is basically a zone in the domain where the mesh is finer. This can be very useful in cases where you're interested in phenomena in a certain area of the flow that require high resolution, but you still want a reasonable number of cells in your overall domain. Besides renaming the boundaries, the final step is to specify inflation layers. These will help capture the boundary layer. I've specified that I want 10 layers that are uniformly 0.3125 millimeters thick. You can see that my mesh has an extremely nice transition between the different cell sizes. This is because CF Mesh uses an octree data structure. Each internal node has eight children. The main thing to take away from this is that you should always refine by powers of two. If you're interested in doing this example yourself, I've uploaded all the files you need along with basic written instructions to my GitHub, which I will link below. 
If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.